Well, looky what we have here. Oh my goodness, this is a Triumph Rocket 3, but not just a Rocket 3, a Rocket 3 GT. Let's talk about this really torquey bike. So you're probably asking, hey, Rainbow, what the hell is a GT on a, on a Rocket 3 GT? Well, I'm gonna tell you, probably stands for Grand Touring because it's more of a touring model, all right? So what this Rocket 3 has, uh, GT, that others don't is number one, it has a windscreen. Number two, if you take a look at the handlebars, all right? The handlebars are swept back and they're a little bit higher, all right? The next thing is that there are forward controls on this bike, okay? Which are very comfortable, by the way, for this gorgeous three-cylinder. And one of the things that is missing that's not on this bike, that comes with this bike, is a backrest. That has been removed. So this 2021 Triumph Rocket GT also has a quick shifter installed, which I will tell you right now is so smooth. It's actually smoother than what we have and I'm using on the Ducati Multistrada V4S. This will set you back uh, with an MSRP of around 23700 for this bike. It has an inline three-cylinder, as you can see, and it's water-cooled. It says it's a 2500 and it's pretty darn close. It's 2,458 cc's of pure joy. Now, of course, this pumps out 165 horses, but more important than that is that there's 163 foot-pounds of torque. And let me tell you, you can definitely feel it on this bike. It is a ride-by-wire. It has a three-to-one header with stainless steel exhaust, which is fantastic. And let me show you one more thing. This right here is shaft-driven. Look at the case on that, huh? It also has a wet clutch for those that are interested. Now this is an aluminum frame, has a cast aluminum swing arm, okay. Uh, front wheel is 17 inches and that is a 15080 R17V that they put on the front. And on the back, oh, let's talk about this back tire, all right? That is a nice fat back tire and what we are looking at there is a 24050R60. On the front, we have dual Brembo's at 320 millimeters dual that is and you know what for a heavy bike like this you're gonna need it and there's a single brembo in the back and that is a 300 millimeter this has a tft display that is adjustable very easily up and down to get just the right angle that you need and well i'm not going to go over the controls a whole lot but everything is easily controlled right here with your mode switch and just like the Ducati Multistrada V4S, you can make your selections and then press to make a select. So now you're probably going, well, hey, how big is that bike? Well, let me tell you that the handlebars here are about 35 inches wide, eh, somewhere close to 890 millimeters for those uh, in the countries that are doing it the right way with metric. The seat, well, about 30 and a half inches. It's really 30.4 or 1,065 millimeters. Wheelbase on this puppy is 66 inches or 1,167 millimeter. Now the dry weight here is 641 and a half pounds, somewhere in the neighborhood of 290, 291 kilograms. This gorgeous tank handles 4.8 US gallons. And believe it or not, this massive three-cylinder here actually gets about 32 miles to the gallon. So it's very comparable to the Multistrada V4S. And that's my comparison bike. Not that it has anything to do with it with a similarity. Hey, but they're both set up for touring. Well, I guess enough about the specifications, enough about this bike. What everyone really wants to know is, what does it sound like? But more importantly, or maybe just as importantly, what does it ride like? Well, let's take a peek here. First thing we're gonna do is turn the bike on. 
and wait for the TFT to crank up. Ooh, I'm on gravel here. I'm sliding. All right, with this particular bike, I know that I'm in neutral here. It's not telling me that anywhere, but I know I'm in neutral because I just left off in here. You have to have the clutch engaged in order to start the bike, no matter what, even if you're in neutral. And that is what it sounds like. This bike is the meaning of torque, okay? Now, I know when I took the Diavel out, I said that the Diavel was just a badass bike. And you know what? The Diavel really is a badass bike. It truly is a badass bike. This bike, however, has a different B name, okay? And for this one, I'm going to use the word beast. This particular bike is a beast. It is really, it just breathes torque. I think if you look up the definition of torque, you're going to find to find a picture of this bike that's what you're gonna find this bike just exudes torque it is smooth it's I'm not gonna use the word nimble but it definitely has its place okay uh, you got a little bit of weight here so you're not gonna quite have the nimbleness of most bikes Oh, what's going on here? What did I do? Break my shifter? Uh-oh, this isn't good. I might have to see if I can start off in... There we go. That felt a little wonky. But this bike... just says to me, I want to get to wherever the hell you want to go, but I want to get there like a bull it's like it's, it's kind of like riding a bull except it's smooth and has wheels i mean woo! talk about torque this this is a, a amazing bike as far as i can tell so far a little wonky on my shifter though uh, hard to get used to it but i think all quick shifters are a little harder to get used to initially because they have those little sweet spots for getting into neutral now i know where i'm at with neutral uh as far as the ducati multi strata v4s with the quick shifter although it's finicky going up going down while you're traveling it's easier as you're coming to a stop um we'll get used to it now the display is pretty nice it does let me know that I what gear I'm in that I'm in neutral uh, there's a lot of information here but it's minimal you know it's it's a digital display of an analog display uh, as you can see on there does have a windscreen for touring I really don't know what the hell that's really going to do for you to be quite honest with you it might take some of the wind off of your chest and maybe put it up to your neck or nipple line I mean I don't really know uh, maybe it's just for looks. I'm sure it has some effect uh, for you, but I'm not sure overall what a small windscreen like that is going to do. Um, maybe we will find out here soon. Now, I just cranked it up to a little over 80 miles an hour, and the wind was the least thing that I was worrying about, to be quite honest with you. So let's continue after this light. Okay, so this bike redlines at about 6,500 RPM. Uh, of course, you know, this is a lower RPM bike. It's all about the torque. Horsepower is nice, about 165. Of course, that's less than a Ducati Multistrada, which there's really no comparison. However, the torque. Did I, did I mention that the torque on this bike is pretty badass? And this is a very comfortable bike. So I, I do like this GT version. The GT version definitely seems to be uh, a little more 
comfortable if you were on a regular you'll know what I'm talking about but this is more comfortable because of these sweeping handlebars coming back they are really very comfortable now this is much more comfortable than my Indian Scout bobber it's an extremely comfortable riding position in general especially with the forward controls now reminder for those who don't already know let's say I'm about five foot eleven I was almost six foot I never made it I think I'm shrinking because I'm getting older so I'm about five eleven I have a 32 inch inseam so the seat height is obviously not an issue at all with this 30.4 inch height uh, seat height the handlebars being swept back gives me a much more comfortable position when I had the Indian Scout bobber for example or I drove the Indian Chief that had the forward controls the like that guy okay on an Indian Scout um, I seem to be hunched forward a little bit more and it's putting pressure on your neck pushing your you know your the gravity from your head is pushing down and it just seemed like with that bike I was very sore in the neck and shoulder area okay this bike I, it, I really have to tell you how amazingly comfortable it is and there's one thing about this particular seat this seat has you planted in place okay you are just clearly planted in place with this seat there's no moving forward no, no moving back it really cups your arse eh, see I said arse for those in Poland dupa I grew up in a very Polish area um, anyway it really cups your ass uh, really well and it's extremely comfortable now for long term I don't know uh, it cuts away nicely uh, right on the thighs so it rolls off easy I don't seem to see any issues with that I really have to figure out there we go it's you know what what's really weird with this uh, quick shifter even though I just used the clutch to do this with the quick shifter or in this in general I don't even feel or think I'm moving it from first to get into neutral it, it, it's literally there we go it's a little better it's literally as though I'm not even moving it but I'm putting pressure on it and all of a sudden I'm in neutral very different than many other bikes so this transmission does not clink in, into gear at all now um, the bike smooth as I said the braking is awesome with these dual Brembo's the front end feels good I don't know if I probably Dave Moss would find something wrong with it I'm sure because there probably is uh, there is some adjustment that you can have in there it looks like oh yeah you know what at the higher speeds it definitely has some nimbleness it's not going to be the same as the adventure bikes or obviously a sport bike of course never in a million years but um, this thing appears to have torque at, at, at every movement now I just hit a, a, a raised see I just hit another one I'm gonna hit them on purpose this bike is absorbing these extremely well like when I hit all of those uh, right here you know what sucks I can't think of the think of the name of a damn all right so let's take this puppy on the highway and see how it feels on the highway the wind actually isn't that bad so I guess I can't really say much about that little windscreen let's go south towards Miami how does that sound and let's see how this thing rides again very comfortable bike extremely comfortable bike lots of torque and to me what the torque means is that you don't really have to do a lot of shifting it handles this turn pretty nicely that's not looking too good we might be seeing how it works in the rain here shortly look at I'm in third gear doing 53 and at 3,000 rpm so Very nice bike. Oh, now you want to come over. Of course you do. All right, 
So, on the highway, you, you just feel like you're in control. Uh, it actually feels very comfortable, very smooth. Yeah, I'm getting the shit beat out of me with the wind, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Let me downshift into fifth. Oh, and there comes the rain. Here comes the rain. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here comes the rain. And I said, I'm test riding. Doo -doo 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 Here comes the rain. Here comes the rain, and I'm getting wet right now. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Wow. So uh, even in uh, the rain on the highway, the bike feels extremely comfortable. I'm in fifth gear at 73. 72 70 some miles an hour i'm a little over 3000 rpm and the torque is absolutely amazing i have no complaints at all about this bike all righty so i can feel the heat on the side of my legs but not very bad at all to be quite honest with you it actually isn't bad um, there's enough heat shield there you have some space your legs come out the tank gives you some room to get uh, up and away there's nothing here to take the heat away I'm sure if I was in really tight traffic stop-and-go traffic of course any bike is gonna give you a problem except the Multistrada V4S to be quite honest with you um, but less heat than I actually had on the Indian Scout, to be earnest with you. So the question is, would Rembo like to have a bike like this? Would I want this bike? Would I buy this bike? Well, although I'm not going to buy this bike, uh, or this because I just it's just not in my budget right now to have a brand new Multistrada in one of these I would absolutely buy this bike so if it was between this and the Indian Chief that I test rode I would absolutely take this if it was this and the Ducati um, Diablo well I gotta be honest with you I would take this bike you know Ducati Diablo is a badass bike this bike like I said, it is just brutal. It is a bear, man. This thing is actually quite amazing. It is so smooth and so comfortable. The folks at Triumph did an absolutely fantastic job with this bike. And now I can see and understand why it's so popular because the bike is just a really comfortable bike. And of course, this is the GT version. Um, but regardless, uh, you know, this is a very comfortable bike and plenty room for a pillion on the back. Uh, really like this bike a, a lot. The forward controls are pretty good. I would have to make an adjustment to the shifter here. I don't care for how the shifter is because to downshift, you really have to bring your foot up really high to get on top of it. You know, so it's kind of like it's not forward enough with the position so I would have to screw around with this to get this in a better position for me I don't like the fact that I have to keep literally flexing my foot inward so much just to be able to get on top of this so the shifter is a little uncomfortable I did have to adjust the clutch lever because I couldn't use two fingers on it because it was still pulling um, so I had to pull it out a little bit whoever had it last but there's an adjustment for that it's not an issue at all so in the rain on the highway on the roads it's not too hot sitting at a bunch of stoplights very comfortable bike I like it I would love to have this bike this is an awesome cruising bike and right now so far I will tell you that this is my favorite cruising bike 
so far. And that beats anything that I've test driven with uh, any other manufacturer to be quite honest with you even there's a lot that I've test driven that I didn't make a video about uh, but as far as Harley Davidson oh this is just a nice bike and it's so much more nimble and it's funny I was talking with some of you, someone else about the Harley Davidson's and we both came up with the same uh, word when it comes time for the Harleys and that is it they just feel clunky now I'm sure they have some really nice bikes and of course their Pan America is a great bike but com for when you're talking a really kick-ass cruiser that's just really nice and smooth and easy to ride and a low seat height and torquey this GT model is fantastic if you want one of these I guess I can thank Ian of course at two wheels world uh, down in Pompano Beach just north of Fort Lauderdale for letting me test drive this puppy this has been a pleasure to ride it really has been a pleasure to ride and I would like to thank Ian again for letting me take this bike out ah, look at that went to neutral and rainbow i am out of here hey by the way everyone already shut off you're not going to hear this please like and subscribe that would be awesome have a great day